Hey guys, welcome back to these UDK tutorials and I'm just going to do a quick reminder here. If you haven't already and you want to be following along with all these, I suggest you go back to the first of the episodes, the getting started uh, tutorial I put together and you can download UDK and watch from there and get started. So before we start building our map and set, I want to go over first the content browser, which can be opened up of course by hitting this little button which I went over earlier in the UI interface over view or whatever it's called. So uh, this content browser is actually pretty much the main hub of all your assets that you have in Unreal and it's how you import assets in and store them, save them, and it's pretty much one of the biggest things you're going to be using whenever it comes to creating content because there's numerous programs that are built in like the material editor and the static mesh, skeletal, anim set editor, just everything's built into the content browser. So what you what we're going to do first is I'm going to just go over pretty much basically what all is in this and First of all, let's start over with collections and what collections is they're just little like built in feature they're just folders that contain assets that are referenced in other packages. So the shared collections doesn't really matter. It's already got some preset stuff in it that you can use if you want to. But shared collections is built in so if you're working on a server with a bunch of other workstations, everyone will be able to a access these assets in these little folders so they're just a little useful. But since you're working on your own computer, the shared collections doesn't really matter if you make one. What you want to do is make my collections, create a private collection and what we can do then is go to some random textures let's just select these three quick and you just click and drag them over and drop them and it says there are three assets added and when we go there there they are they're not actually in there they're just referenced here they're still in the same exact package that they were in they're just referenced in your little collection so it's really useful for setting up different particle systems and static meshes that you use a lot you just put them in my collections and they're really easy to access when you're building stuff so that's pretty much it for collections if you want to delete it of course you hit this little remove collections thing destroy and it's gone so you don't have to look at it anymore if you don't want it there and we'll go another thing here is this little button right here whenever you're searching we'll go into searching quick if whenever you're searching you want to search for all assets you just remember to click that and it'll just refresh everything this brings you over to the search bar which we can search just about anything in your content let's just search a lens flare quick and and you can see it popped up with a bunch of lens flares and it's not and it searches it by type and you can narrow down your search results to loaded unloaded packages and what kind of what kind of uh, asset it is if it's uh, there's not gonna be any skeletal meshes of course but if you want it to be a particle system or you want to search all of them there's actually these are actually just favorites of all the different types of assets and your the most common ones but if you want to search all of them which are less common you go in here and you can narrow it down by less common assets asset classes and stuff and even then there's even a more narrowed down thing if you want to make tags whenever you're building an asset and you create tags i never really do that but a lot of the preset, the stuff that already comes with Unreal will have tags built into it that you can narrow your search down even more. So that's pretty much how you search for stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can clear the search and remember always hit all assets when you begin and it just makes it a lot easier. Next we have the packages section and what this is, packages are pretty much just folders and files that have all the assets from Unreal built into them. So when you ever import something into Unreal, it makes a separate copy and brings it to Unreal and leaves the original out on your desktop or whatever, wherever you import it from. So whenever you import it in here, it conforms it and it's built into Unreal permanently. The only thing you have to do and always remember, this is very important, is saving your packages. Whenever you build a new package or change something in a package, if it's just like going into this archetype right here and say changing this to one or something like that you'll see this little asterisk appear 
right next to the name and you always have to remember that means you have to save the package that it's in so it has it right here there we go example crowd it popped up as a little asterisk meaning you have to save it if you don't save it and close down unreal you lose all the information that you changed so always remember to right click and you can save as and the package will you know save and probably shouldn't have done that because I don't know if I wanted to change that archetype but it's not a huge deal because I never use it anyway so what, what we can also do is when you first get into Unreal and you see a package isn't loaded it has the highlighted packages the bold white that's that means they're loaded fully loaded and you want to this one this gray out one isn't quite all loaded so what you can do is right click on it and say fully load and it, it'll do everything it needs to do to fully load it and you really don't need to do that anymore because it'll automatically load it whenever you try and reference something in there so let's say we want to go in here sometimes it'll it'll just give it a second and it'll fully load it it'll it'll fully load the asset it, it can load separate assets inside a package instead of loading the whole one which it, the more packages you load the more memory intensive it becomes so you have to be careful with that so whenever you're creating an object so what you can do is you can create new packages and that can either be done by importing packages or new assets to make and you can just make a package from there or you can actually just create the package we'll just create one quick what we can do this will actually create a new asset, sorry, but whenever you create a new asset or create a new, import a new asset, you can just create a package from scratch. Either, either that or just import it or make it into an into a existing package. So I'll make my own package just by typing it in, of course. And you can choose the group. You can make your own group. So I'll just do group one just to show it off. And then you know, and then you can just choose the different type of factory which means there's th this references all the different kinds of assets you can create if it's a camera animation or a preset curve or an anim set anim tree it'll create that so that when you open it you can use the default editor for each asset so I'm just gonna make something for a sound cue just randomly and what that'll do is it'll open right up the sound cue editor because it suspects that I have a sound I want to plug in and everything which I don't so as you can see here it just plugged in the new packages thing and if you go down here it has the group that I had made it in you can make as many groups as you want I usually don't because I'm unorganized and for the package as you can see it has the little star and you need to save it if you don't save it that whole package disappears next time you restart so always remember save your packages I'm not gonna save it right now but you can also unload the packages as you can see with this right click all the other options are you, I've never really used them so they're not a huge deal if you really wanna get get into those I suggest checking out those 3d buzz tutorials and they go really in depth but next we have import what we can do for import is I'm gonna but I'm gonna go to my Steam. How do I get to my Steam stuff? Uh, yeah, there it is. And program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, uh, Mass Effect 2. I actually have some assets extracted. You can only. There we go. This is something random. Um, and the skeletal meshes. You know, we'll get Thane. So what we do is we import, I just imported a skeletal mesh and what we have to do is we'll specify the package. It can either go in, let's, we'll just put in the new one I made and we'll specify a group as Thane and I'll just keep the name and assume Maya coordinates for the import skeletal meshes is if you're using Maya and it just flips the axis because they're different because UDK is Z up and Maya is Y up. And I think I think 3DS is Z up too, so that's why a lot of Unreal Studios use 3DS. So we'll just hit OK to that, and it'll do its little link processing triangles and whatnot. And there we go; it just imported into its new group. And as you can see, if you click on the regular package, it's going to bring up both of them. But if you want to specify groups, there you go. So there we go. We have Thane imported, and that's how you import an asset. It pretty much works for anything. Usually, you're not going to have to change any options when you import because it already has everything set up. Unless you know what you're doing and you want to import it to a certain 
alpha channel for different textures or whatnot. So always remember to save your packages. I, I do it regularly, especially right after I change something. It might take a little extra time, but it's definitely worth it. So that's pretty much all the assets, packages. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory if you think about it. And we can go over it for the regular viewport. This is like I use it. This is how I usually have it set up. It's pretty simple because it gives you a pretty good size view of what you're working with. But you can also change it to a list view by hitting these bottom little buttons here. You can list, have a list up here and then the pictures. You have a list on the left and the pictures. Or you can just have what I have and just have the pictures because it's really easy. And then you can change the size of the pictures by going over here and hitting this little thing. You can have them really, really big. Make it really small, but I usually have it 128. And then you can also sort them in different different sections. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do for this video. I just went over basically packages and importing assets and stuff. In the next video, I'm gonna go over all the different types of programs that you can use and the static mesh physical physics asset editor just everything that comes with Unreal. I'll just go through briefly just showing everyone what those are and what they can do. And then after that, we'll start building our map. So see you next video.